we got our three speakers spotlighted. We should be set to go, Keith. That's great. Thank you. Well, I'm delighted to get Kim, who's done a mammoth work on making this actually happen, come and help me out. So, Kim, welcome. Thank you very much for getting us going into our formal proceedings. Okay. Um, thanks, Keith. Um, I'm getting to talk to you about why we wrote the book. Um, when Nicole, Keith and I facilitated our first deliberation together back in 2014 for the City of Melbourne, there had been very few organisations in Australia who had commissioned a deliberation and only a handful of facilitators that had led one. You literally could count people, these people on one hand. Since 2014, we have had the honour and the privilege to facilitate more than 40 long and short form deliberations and a couple of standing panels. It is easy to say honour and privilege, but it really, really has been. Every one, every one of these deliberations that we facilitated have taken our breath away in terms of the capacity of everyday people to create sound recommendations, the trust that builds between sponsoring organisations and their communities, and the transformation that can occur for those everyday people, our deliberators. We've written this book for three reasons. Um, the first, to share our methods and learnings. Secondly, to make the work of facilitation visible, something that we've um, built on from what um, Oliver Escobar writes. And thirdly, to contribute our small part to improving how democracy works. So just going through those three things. Firstly, the book sets out what we, what we would have liked to have known when we started out, including the pitfalls and really especially the pitfalls, so that you'll see um, when you look at the book that we've included a lot of lessons from the field. Our primary motivation has been simply to share and pass on what we've learned and what we've learned from so many other people. And many of those people are in this room tonight, the people we have learned from, so that others can take up this role of facilitating deliberation. Secondly, we are seeking to make the work of facilitation visible. Over the last few years, a good number of delib deliberation handbooks have been written, some by people such as Ian and Ka that are here, tonight, such as Ian and Kyle from the New Democracy Foundation, Marcin Gerwin um, from Poland, who's here tonight, and also Oliver Escobar. We feel that we can add to this body of work by providing a perspective that is seen through the eyes of the facilitators, what facilitators need to know and do at each stage of a deliberation. So things like from contributing to the overall macro design, so matters such as deciding on the topic, the number of days, those sorts of things. Is it in a room or is it online? Um, to deciding, importantly, what happens in each session, what we call micro design. For example, <clears throat> how much time do we allocate to each of the components of a deliberation? So components are things like relationship building, sharing information, giving people information, dialogue, the actual decision making. So how much time do you have to give to each of these things? Is something a facilitator spends, um, you know, has um, the ability to help with? Plus, importantly, what activity will best achieve the purpose of each of these things? Because as any facilitator will know, there are 20 different ways of doing something. And then also as facilitators to be aware of group dynamics and adapt to what's happening in the room at any moment. So in essence, we are seeking to bring the principles and practice of good facilitation into the work and the task of deliberation. Our hope is that by writing this book, we will contribute in a small way to help people create change and solve complex problems problems and in doing so increase the trust between communities and their elected leaders. There's data in Appendix 3 in the book on the significant uplift that you get in trust that can be generated by deliberation. So we hope, just finally, that whatever work you are doing, you'll find something in this book that will help you with your work. So that's why we wrote the book and I'm going to hand it back to Keith.
Oh, well done, Kim. A little virtual applause for Kim. I don't know if anyone's seen her socials on timeline. There's an amazing little time lapse of Kim picking off about a million post-it notes that she's been constructing the format of the book over the last few years. So thank you, Kim. We're indebted to you for this. Um, uh, of course, our secret goal is now that it's out there, Kim. We want lots of feedback so we can do an even better one in version two, which I'm sure you've already started. Um, our second uh, of three short introductions in our keynote tonight, uh, Art, thank you so much. Uh, we've interrupted your holiday. You're calling in from West Ireland somewhere and you've been an inspiration. We haven't had a chance to work with you yet, but as a fellow countryman, you know, to know a long time after I left the country, to see what you achieved in Ireland while we're working in this space was just inspiring for us. So we are really, truly delighted to have you with us tonight. Uh, thank you so much uh, for moving away from the family for a little bit and coming to join us for our session. So please, I, I did ask the team tonight, I said, look, for all our speakers, now, I want you to say, honestly, were you like seven and something happened? You said, now, when I grow up, I'm going to be a deliberation expert. Or what happened? Where did it trigger for you? What was the big thing that got you going? And tell us some of the insights you've learned along the way while you're doing this stuff. Thank you and welcome, Art. Great. Th th thank you, um, Keith. And it's such a pleasure to be here. And greetings from the southwest of Ireland, where it is high summer. And as we might expect in Ireland, it is lashing rain and freezing right now. <laughs> um, it, 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 it is no difficulty um, to, to come and talk to you today because I have four children in the house with no internet access. So I am secretly hoping that this conversation can go on all day. Um, uh, anyway, listen, it's a, it's a pleasure to be here. I'm going to speak a little bit about, um, about that. Um, in answer to your first question, um, how did I end up doing this? And like most really good stories, it, it was a complete accident. Um, Ten years ago this month, um, it was a Monday night, I was watching reruns of the West Wing, and my phone rang around 10 o'clock at night. And um, uh, now that wasn't unusual. I, I was head of communications in the parliament at the time as a civil servant. And um, normally when the phone rang at that hour of the night, it's an editor from a newspaper who's going to write a story that was going to make your ceiling fall in the following day. But it was the prime minister um, of the country, Art Pichuk, and he rang and said, um, Art, um, we have this thing, it's in our programme for government. It's never, ever going to work, but we committed to doing it, so we're going to have to do it. And I said, well, well tell me, what is this thing? It's called the Constitutional Convention. It's a hundred people in a room looking at some things. Um, but like I said, it's never going to work, but we think you're the guy, you know? So, so I said, well, tell me a little bit about it because, um, so we spoke for a few minutes at the end um, of, of which, I mean, because the, the country was in the middle of a financial crisis at the time and there was no money for anything. And um, at the end of the conversation, I said, well, let me see if I have you right, um, Tishuk. As long as I don't kill anybody or spend any money, I can do whatever the hell I like. And he said, I knew you were the man for me. So that's how I ended up um, in this particular job. It astonishes me that um, what was supposed to be a six month initiative, at which point I was happily going to go back to do my real job, that 10 years later, I'm still talking about it. And even more worryingly, 10 years later, I'm still doing it. And um, while I'm waiting for my next job to start, I'm currently um, secretary to the two citizens assemblies currently underway in this country, um, because you should be aware that citizens assemblies have transformed the way that um, Irish people live their lives. Everybody, I think, who understands in this world that it has successfully contributed to the delivery of marriage equality and abortion. But under the radar, it has contributed to so much legislation in the last 10 years on issues of climate change, electoral politics, political reform. All of these issues came from the um, first three citizens' assemblies. Numbers four and five are underway right now. And we have the um, unedifying but really pleasing spectacle now at the moment of the political system fighting amongst each other 
in relation to which issue gets sent to a citizens assembly next. So we have, as I said, two underway at the moment. We have another three in the pipeline. Um, so we've got citizens assemblies up the wazoo for the uh, until at least 2025. And um, they work, we asked our, our most recent members in the citizens assembly um, why they volunteered to take part. And it broke down to a third, a third, a third, which pleased me. Some people were interested in the issue. Some people were um, uh, wanted to make a contribution to public policy. But one third of the 100 people said that citizens' assemblies are now acknowledged as a way of getting hard jobs done. You know, so there's acknowledgement from the people of Ireland and from the political system that this is a really, really useful mechanism to complement the political and institutional arrangements currently in place in this country. Now, I'm happy to talk a little bit, Keith, but if you'd like to ask me some questions, maybe mm -hmm. this is the way to do it. Do you know, um, Art, that was amazing. I have to say, I kind of had a few goosebumps when you were sharing that story. And I know some possibly heard it before. I never did. And I just thought, wow, that's incredible. Absolutely incredible. And kudos to you. Um, there will be millions of questions, Art, and you're going to get to talk to at least uh, probably, uh, you know, a good 15% of the room in some depth. So I, I'm, on their behalf, they're going to ask lots of questions for us. But if there are questions for Art, put them into that group map because they'll be really good fodder when we're getting into a smaller group conversation. Because I'd like to get us moving there very shortly, if that's okay. So Art, thank you so much. You're setting the scene, wetting the appetite right. and getting us ready for the convo. Um, I'm going to invite our third uh, keynote that we have tonight. And uh, we have the Honourable Jay Witherall here. Jay, thank you so much. It's been years since we worked together in South Australia. And I'm, I'm assuming you're calling in probably from Western Australia at the moment. Are you in Western Australia at the moment? Yes. Right. Yeah. So, you know, uh, we, we kind of tentatively said, yeah, is there any chance you could pop along? We know you're in demand and you very kindly have agreed. So thank you so much for coming along tonight. And similar to Art, share with us some of your reflections. Where did it start for you? Uh, what's the big challenge in learning for you? And, you know, what's on your mind coming into tonight? Thank you and welcome. Thank you. And... Um... Uh, thanks, everybody, and it's wonderful to see such a great group together. Congratulations on, on the book uh, for, for the authors. It's a wonderful publication. Um, I'm coming to you from the land of the Wadjuk people in Noongar Nation here in Fremantle. But um, my journey began really early in my life as a minister. I travelled overseas just as planning minister, actually, to look at what I thought would be some community engagement models in both Canada and the US. And I, I came across a fascinating gentleman in the Kennedy School of Government called Mark Moore, who gave me this book and said it was the most important uh, book that uh, he thought had been written about public policy. And it was called Coming to Public Judgment by uh, a bloke called Daniel Yankalevich. And it was written in 1990, but it's as fresh as Daisy. And it, it basically, its basic thesis is that we have to translate mass opinion into public judgment. And you do that through a process of deliberation. Uh, and for me, it was a revelation. I, I'd never heard uh, public policy and its formulation discussed in that way before. And um, there's some lovely phrases in the book, but my favourite really is uh, where he talks about the, the greatest resource we have as a community is the common sense judgment of ordinary everyday citizens. And I think that's just a really powerful and empowering way of looking at uh, the resources that we have as a community. And um, the other little uh, side trip was to Canada where we ran across some other leaders in this public discourse and deliberation issue and came across a, a great little phrase called where they said a lot of politics and politicians get into the habit of uh, what they call announce and defend uh, as opposed to debate and decide. And I thought that was a lovely way of uh, describing the problem. You know, we, we slave away inside our sort of cabinet rooms and come up with answers to problems that people haven't asked. And then when we reveal them, uh, because people haven't been part of the process of deliberation, they don't understand that the choices and the compromises we made, where if they'd been along on the journey, 
they would actually understand the various go no go gates that that we were confronted with, and they'd be able to more strongly support the decision. So for me, this this was a massive turning point. It gave me a blueprint for how I would operate as a minister, uh, and yeah, it, it it was a critical issue. And I'll fast forward to the last question. You know, you 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 posed to me, which is you know what difference did it make to my career? I, well, I can safely say I think it it actually um, caused me to become premier because when I was sort of making my pitch for to, to actually lead our party and therefore the state, it was really about this idea of faith in politics and politicians and that um, we'd been a government of long duration by then and people thought we were an okay government, but they thought we were a bit arrogant. And so what I said is that we needed to involve people more in the decisions that shaped their lives. And that was really my central you know, central pitch. So uh, I can safely say that deliberative democracy has not only assisted me in my career, it probably has made my career. So um, I've got a lot to thank uh, for it. But um, I think I think you were proposing also um, uh, the, the question of, you know, what the biggest learnings were. Yeah. And um, the two things I think is really going to uh, Kim's point at the first deliberative democracy we had about um, an issue, we had this legislation that was stuck about alcohol fuel violence and we were trying to regulate it. And it was really a bit of a binary debate about you know, whether we're going to be the fun police and shut down licensed venues or whether we're going to deal with alcohol fuel violence. Anyway, we constructed this jury and I remember going to the first session and I met a gentleman and I asked him, you know, why are you here? And he said, well, I've got a young son and um, I'm really disappointed at the state of politics and I just wanted to show to him that politics can actually work. And I, uh, I'm here because I believe in, in that. And I just thought it was such a, it was such a, you know, a beautiful and lofty ambition. And, and it, the people that got their golden ticket, as it were, to participate in the, the citizens jury were just so grateful to be asked, they they took the responsibility so seriously, and it was it was quite heartwarming to see the um, the conscientious way in which citizens went about their task on behalf of other citizens of, of thinking deeply about a topic. Um, the other learning I would have is this, and this is sort of through bitter experience, and that is don't confuse representative processes, which are what politicians are all about, with deliberative processes. So don't get scared into running, you know, to try and replicate a representative process because that's not what this is. Deliberation is not uh, representation. And it, in it, it, and in fact, it can be the enemy of it because, you know, we've all seen very shouty town halls, which are the anathema of deliberation. Mm. And I think that small groups like juries are just, you know, can be very powerful ways of, of grappling uh, with these things. So, yeah, I, I suppose the final thing I would leave you with is that, um, uh, that you know, there's, it's, it's, it's common to say that, um, you know, we've lost faith in politics and politicians. I would flip that on its head and say, what if politicians have lost faith in the community to make conscientious judgments? And, you know, having been on the sort of, and it's easy to do that because you go into a, you know, when you do put yourself out there in front of citizens, you do run the risk of being, of being, um, you know, criticised and quite, you know, viciously criticised. So there is, a, there is an aversion, I think, for some politicians to share the complexity and difficulty of the questions they're, they're grappling with. But I really think you do have to, you have to trust that, that, conscientiously sharing the complexity of, of difficult decisions will actually be ultimately rewarded by, by citizens and you've got to put your faith in them. Otherwise, you know, the more you distance yourself, the, the, you know, the, the more cynical they become. Dave, that's wonderful. Thank you. I, I, could, I could listen to both of you uh, talk a lot more than you've already uh, done tonight and it's been uh, really wonderful as a kind of bit of a scene setter. Thank you, Jay. I, I am going to move us into a conversation. 
And uh, there's a lot of amazing people here tonight. And we thought, how on earth do we spread this around? We are joined by many that have got equally as good experience in, in lots and lots of different contexts. And from, from some that have been participants right through to auspicing groups, the facilitator groups, a real mixed bag. So we're about to do what we call our speed dialogue process. Now, it's going to be two rounds of conversation. We're going to take this through pretty much about quarter past seven or a few minutes uh, after. Now, I know some of our speakers will check in with you. We might lose a speaker or two along the evening, but we'll check in and support you with that. Look at this array. They're here. They've got no, you are wondering why some people have got numbers. It's so we can move them about. You are about to be put into a room. In the room, there'll be somewhere between eight and 10 probably participants. You may or may not have somebody that's dressed like me in one of these blue shirts in there as well. We're not really facilitating time. We're kind of just joining in. It's very light touch facilitation. It's a chance for you to talk. And we've invited a whole range of our peers who very kindly helped us review and 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 uh, comment on the book when we had it all drafted and have been very kind in offering their time tonight so welcome brett from our in budapest uh, from the sortition foundation we have caroline here caroline based in canberra and caroline's research has been instrumental for the work we do uh, ian and carson who are here from the new democracy foundation we've run many projects together and uh, sweated over this work over the last several years. Jeanette Hartz Carp, fantastic, you know, an inspiration for us, Kim mentioned you at the start. Lucy, you've been amazing tracking us all the way and supporting us and helping us with those learnings. Of course, Nick and Kim, uh, you know, they're here to talk from their firsthand experience. And Oliver, you've been a, an inspiration in helping us prepare the book. Uh, been really wonderful. I hope I haven't left everyone off there. <laughs> um, you're going to get to meet randomly two of these people. They're there really just to start your conversation. They'll probably share a few insights with you at the start of their conversation. Um, do feel free to then jump in and just talk to each other. We have our little group map up and running. So do share insights. There's a lot of intel. We will publish this and give it to you afterwards. This will be a good cheat sheet for us all to have. Get your questions and wonderings in. We'll follow that up afterwards as well. If anybody needs support, Lyndall, uh, Jody, and myself, we're kind of roaming around as our Beck and Jane, so we can help out however is needed. Um, we, it'll probably be just a little less than 15 minutes. We'll max out the time as best we can. Uh, enjoy your conversations. When we come back, we'll have some brief reflections and we will formally finish at 7.30, but there likely is some after-party behaviour. So uh, those that need to depart and go and watch Neighbours, for any uh, Neighbours fans uh, that's finishing tonight at half seven, <laughs> you know, we timed it perfectly. How brilliant was that? <laughs> so, but for the rest of us, let's enjoy our combos. Um, thank you, everybody. We have about nine minutes and uh, six seconds left in our formal time together. Um, speakers, you're going to have about a 60 second warning and then I'm coming to you with the lowest number first and working my way up. I want you to have ready for me uh, five words or less. How was that for you and any final nugget you can offer to these wonderful people that are here tonight? So um, we will start our recording as well, just to let you know. And uh, we'd love to take a screenshot before we all leave. So if that's possible, uh, we could do that. Um, but we will start with our speakers in a second. I want to, by way of kind of thanking our speakers, I'd love to get a couple of shout outs. You know, how was that? I know it was only two. You know, if we had another hour or so, we could have gone through lots of them. So so Dan, uh, uh, Dan Klein, you, you're based in the States at the moment and a good friend of ours. And I know you're mid-holiday too. So Dan, how was that for you? How did the speakers help you tonight? Any insights that you got from them? Oh, very insightful. First speaker was Lucy. She did an excellent job about talking about the integrity, you know, and the, and the value of integrity to, to the process. And I found it, you know, got dozens of questions in my head going. And the second one was Jay. And uh, it, it's nice. Uh, I, I'm, this is my personal opinion. It's very nice to see an intelligent a person that has been in politics, hopefully that, you know, will be in politics to have the view that, you know, we need to have uh, public opinion as a voice in policymaking. So nice. loved it. 
Thank you, Dan, and thanks for joining us in the set. What time is it for you now? It must be, I have no idea. It's always early. <laughs> okay, it's always early. Okay, that's all good. It's pretty early. Um, give me a wave or put an electronic hand up and I'll be able to find you. Uh, come off mute and give me a couple of more shout outs. How did speakers help you tonight? Something inspiring you heard. Don't be shy. Uh, I'm looking for electronic hands or actual hands are even so, better. So um, quickly, thank hey, you. Noel, how are you? G'day, g'day. Um, thank you, Kimbra. You were talking a little bit about um, polarization and outrage and how you can maybe dig deeper and get more to the heart of what might be the rules that need to be set up around deliberation and the questions that need to be explored. So thank you. Fantastic. Thank you. And I'll, I'll go to Tracy and then I'll start. I'll start with our speakers. Good to see you, Tracy. How are you? You too, Keith. How are you going? Good. Great, great event. Um, we had Kimbra and Lee and Carson, and um, Carson's going to help me take over Queensland <laughs> and bring, bring it into bring it into the 20th century. <laughs> so, oh, so that's but, my goal. I've been reinvigorated. <laughs> oh, thank you, Tracy. Good, good to see you, and uh, thank you for that. Now, please uh, do put any shout outs into the chat line. Will be really nice. Um, uh, speakers, I am going to come to you in a moment, and I, uh, Nick, I'll be starting with you because you're number one under my on my hit list. So I'll start with you. Um, for everybody else, I'm wondering uh, just uh, to give people a chance to think for a second. Um, Lyndall, would you mind bringing us over to a final group map for tonight? And you'll see. I don't want to share my screen just so we can kind of maximize seeing each other. But the group map, if you're in there, there's a lovely uh, little head, hand, heart. Uh, map in there so something that you've learned tonight uh, something that maybe has inspired you a little bit tonight and, and a little action about what are you going to do next now any of this data you will get to see it so we will publish it and tidy it up and give it to you beyond tonight Nick how are you going are you ready five words right if you can <laughs> I think I've got six I, I, I would like to say pick something hard and be courageous you can do this it's more than six. Oh, that's that's totally fine. Thank you, Nick. Well done. And thanks for, for joining in so well tonight. Okay, who we got? Carson, number two. Yikes, five words. Sri yeah. Lanka, <laughs> North <laughs> Queensland, um, <clears throat> Uluru. They're my five words. Oh, nice. Okay, good. Very good. Thank you. Uh, Kim, you're number three. I think I'm repeating what Noel just said. Long-term work needed on polarization. Oh, nice. Good job. Good job. Now giving our speakers, uh, giving our, our camera crew a chance to spotlight people as well. I think we have Ian at number four. Ian, how are you going? Not great with the brevity. <laughs> <laughs> Very briefly, the number one problem I think people grip on is loss of agency. We had a former junior, junior, juror, Danielle in the group. In doing oh, this group for 11 years, we always hear from people five, eight, 10 years later saying, I look at politics differently because I've lived it. This group can scale that. And in, once 100,000 Australians have experienced it, that will start to change politics. Thank you, Ian. I love the passion you brought. And, and Danielle, lovely to have you here. We worked uh, together on a panel years ago and she's been helping us out, cascading that to <coughs> other panels even recently. So lovely to see you, Danielle. Thank you. Um, who have we got next? Carolyn, how are you? Thank you for joining in tonight. Hi, everyone. Um, so my words are building legitimacy and support. Nice. Well done. And thank you, Carolyn. Uh, thanks for the contributions tonight. I'm sure your groups enjoyed the conversations. Brett, how are you? Yeah, thanks. Good, Keith. Uh, institutionalization, 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 institution. <laughs> I want to see this uh, taken seriously in an empowered setting. Oh, fantastic. And if you have not read The Death of Politicians from Brett, it's, you should get it into your book collection. It's a great read. So thank you, Brett, for coming along. Art, thank you so much. Uh, you can you can lie to the family and say it went on for hours. I'm really sorry. We'll validate it as you need to. But uh, thanks for coming along. How are you going? Any last words, to everybody? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Listen, I, I, I might just before you leave, I might just add a little nugget um, for myself. But, Please. Um, I'm a, I, I'm a simple man. 
and my five words are actually four words you know let the people decide oh very good yeah that's wonderful thank you thank you Art. lovely um Jeanette how are you going I haven't seen Jeanette yet I know she's here somewhere oh, we'll get you give you a nudge off new new there there we go we know you've got a, 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 um, a birth about to happen in the family, I think, as well. So thanks for coming along. Let's get, get you a, a little nudge. There we go. I'm a grandma. It happened. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> um, I, I guess it's be innovative, um, provocative, supportive of one another and just stay with it. <laughs> oh nice good on you thank you so much and thank you for all your inspiring effort you've given to us over the years as well and advice to us so really appreciate it um jay how are you thank you for staying with us good. through to almost to the end now pleasure um my five words are mass opinion versus public judgment oh nice <laughs> i like that very good thank you jay and lucy uh, i know oliver's given his apologies he had he had a commitment he had to leave a bit early but he was really uh, grateful for the opportunity to meet some of you so lucy how are you i'm gonna push it with seven words keith okay that's insights, okay <laughs> insights on impartiality are insightful for integrity oh nice thank you thank you lucy that's really really appreciated now, we've got two last uh, people that are going to help me, and I've got a couple of little announcements. So I'm going to Kim for some official thank yous, and then Nick. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Keith. So just, I know we've only got a, a minute, so I'm going to be fairly quick about this, but we wanted to thank the people who've encouraged us to write this book. So um, Carson and um, Jerry Stoker in particular, um, and a lot of our work has been because of the work that NDF have done across Australia. So, you know, we really appreciate the leadership that NDF has taken on this in Australia and internationally. Um, to Jeanette hartz -Karp and Carson, um, a lot of us have, um, you know, uh, were the early leaders in this field. We have written a short history about deliberation where you can read more about um, their work. Um, the editors, we had two editors on the book, um, Mel Irwin and Lynette Smith. I think they were coming tonight, but I haven't seen them. So thank you to them. Our graphic designers were DCA and we particularly, our colleagues, Jane Lovejoy and Beck Marshall did a lot of work in editing and design. So they were my thank you. So I'm throwing to Nick for her thank yous. Yes, I thought I would uh, do the thing that um, we wanted to thank the people who kept the home fires burning, which are our family, who whilst we were <laughs> travelling around and running workshops in the middle of the night and somewhere else, they were, were keeping it all going. But also we wanted to thank the participants, the people who stood up to the plate and participated in these processes, made it possible for us to learn. We learnt from them. Uh, the organisations who auspiced this, you, you, you stepped out. It was a risk you felt uncomfortable and did it and finally you thank you for coming along and sharing this with us it's just an absolute joy to see people from so many different places and spaces and thinking so thank you so much um oh, over to you Keith. thank you and thank you nick and kim for allowing me to facilitate and not be a speaker that was really appreciated <laughs> <laughs> um our last couple of uh, bits of announcement for us we're going to put in the chat line and we'll email it out to you anyway there's a little bit of a freebie about the seven steps and 34 sub steps that we came up with within the book uh, there is some links in there as well that will take you to some offers we're trying to keep the book discounted we're more interested in getting the book out there and spreading the love as much as we can uh, so do uh, join in and do that we promised some door prizes so paul Irene, Lisa, congrats. There will be a, a, a book on the way to you very, very shortly. Um, I'm checking with the team if I've missed anything, but I think that's it. We are discounting it for the moment because it's going quite quick and fast, and that's great. That's the intent is to get the message out there as wide as we can. 
Um, we are done. It <laughs> is two minutes over. I am going to stop the formal proceedings. If people want to hang around, you're very welcome. There'll probably be breakouts and drinks and God knows what. So <laughs> well, well done, everybody. Uh, do feel free to come off mute. You're probably two minutes into the last episode of Neighbours, if that's more of a priority. We understand after 37 years. So so well done, everybody. Thank you so much for coming along. Do feel free to come off mute and do a shout out to each other. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. Thanks, everyone. 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 Thanks. Well done. Good job. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Good morning. Good afternoon. 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 Good aftern